15 rumored hidden treasures we're still searching for. Forrest Fenn was a rich collector who was diagnosed with kidney cancer in 1988. So with only a year to live, he went to the Rocky Mountains and hid many treasures and old artifacts estimated to value about one to three million dollars. It's like an old adventure film. He left instructions in the form of a riddle to help people find his treasures. Begin it where warm waters halt and take it in the canyon down. Not far, but too far to walk. Put him below the home of Brown. Seriously, how generalized and unspecific did he want his riddle to be? No wonder nobody's ever been able to find it. The Golden Owl. Have you ever tried to drive someone crazy? Well, this is a way to do it. A man went by the name Max Valentine and in 1993 he claimed he had hidden a treasure, a golden owl, in the French countryside. He said if anyone managed to find it, he would reward that person a million dollars. People went crazy trying to find this. Some even burned a church down in pursuit of this golden owl. In an interview, Max Valentine stated that the owl was still in place as he had gone back to check on its location. He said people had gotten close with obvious signs of searching nearby. Unfortunately, Max Valentine is now dead and no one knows whether the owl is even still hidden. Imagine if this man just made up the whole story to draw attention to himself and give the impression to everyone in the world that he had enough money to play games with it. We can only guess. Thomas Beale's $63 million Thomas Beale was a miner who discovered about $63 million worth of gold with a few other men in 1816. They wanted to make sure their children and all their descendants got this money, so they left it hidden. Thomas Beale wrote three codes describing where the treasure was, what the treasure was, and the names of the men and their family so that they would know who the treasure belonged to. He gave this code in a box to a man named Robert Morris, who was supposed to open the box after 10 years. Thomas Beale was supposed to send a key for the codes if he wasn't able to return, but he never did. Robert and a friend tried their best to translate the code, but the best they could do was understand what the treasure was. No one has found the treasure to this day. Pearls in the Salton Sea In 1612, a ship was sailed by Juan de Iturb across the Pacific Ocean. Rumor has it that the ship sank in what is now known as the Salton Sea in the Mojave Desert. They say there were loads of expensive black pearls on the ship. The pearls are believed to be worth millions of dollars. The men say they were tossed off the boat into Kahula and had to leave the ship and hike on foot all the way to safety. No one has ever claimed to find all these pearls, so people believe they're still out there somewhere. This legend has grown in fame, so much so that they even made a movie about the treasure being found in 1870. Diamonds in London this treasure has a greater chance of being discovered since it was only lost in 2009. Graf Diamonds is an expensive jewelry store in London that was robbed in 2009. The two men who robbed the place had extensive disguises. They had gone to a makeup artist for four hours before the robbery, changing their faces and hair. They said to each other that even their own mother wouldn't have been able to recognize them. They went into the Graf store pretending to buy jewelry and then held an employee at gunpoint, forcing the store to give them 43 pieces of jewelry worth about 65 million dollars. These jewels were never discovered even though both of the men were eventually caught by police. So there's 65 million dollars worth of jewels and diamonds out there somewhere. Although if you did find these stolen jewels, you'd still have to return them as each one is marked and chipped with the graph code. Floor de Mar Put on your scuba diving gear and get ready for the underwater experience of your life. A nobleman, Alfonso de Albuquerque, had a large carrick filled with gifts for the King of Portugal. The boat had traveled around the Indian Ocean but unfortunately sank in November of 1511. This was one of the biggest carricks in existence for its time, weighing 400 tons. So when you hear that it was full of treasure, you know there had to be a lot. This treasure was taken from the Sultan of Malacca's palace. The ship sunk during a storm, leaving many men dead. It sunk in the kingdom of Aru, Sumatra, off Tamiya Point. Alfonso lost all the treasure. The boat and its treasure are still to be discovered. Portugal, Indonesia, and Malaysia are all fighting over who actually owns the boat if it's ever found. So you might have a hard time keeping this treasure even if you do discover it. 
Mosby's $350,000. Colonel John Singleton Mosby, is that not the longest name you've ever heard of? Also known as the Grey Ghost because of how quickly he disappeared, was a commander in the Civil War in Virginia, fighting in the Battle of Bull Run and the Peninsular Campaign. He had outstanding skills in disappearing and blending into things to avoid being caught. As a child, he was weak and frail and was often bullied. He always tried to fight back and would lose. He shot a kid that was attacking him without killing him and ended up in jail for a year. Perhaps this is what taught him to disappear and hide rather than attack face on. He took $350,000 but then almost got caught so he and his men buried the treasure. He sent men back later to collect the money but they were all caught and killed. So John Mosby never ended up going back to collect his treasure. The Irish Crown Jewels People are still trying to work out how the Irish Crown Jewels went missing back in 1907. The cleaner who worked in the Dublin Castle discovered the safe wide open with the jewels gone, while the inner door had been secured with the library key still in the lock. The jewels were said to be worth around 1.3 million pounds in 2015 and contained the jeweled star and badge regalia of the Sovereign and Grand Master of the Order of St. Patrick. The safe was moved in 1907, but the dimensions were wrong and so it couldn't fit in the strong room, so they had to store it in the office of the King of Arms, Arthur Vickers. The keys were all held by the Vickers and staff. They were very relaxed about this. The Vicar got drunk once and awoke with all the precious jewels on him. This might not have been an outside job. Perhaps it was carried out by those who protected the jewels. People say these jewels have probably been broken into pieces and sold off or hidden away somewhere. The Florentine Diamond This mystery feels like the sort of thing you find in many novels. The Florentine Diamond is a beautiful yellow diamond with origins from India that was valued at $750,000 during World War I. The stone dates back to at least 1476. During the 1700s, the jewels were placed in the Habsburg Crown Jewels after Francis Stephen of Lorraine married Empress Maria Theresa, bringing the jewel to Vienna with him. During World War I, the Austrian Empire fell. Thus, Charles I took many jewels, including the Florentine diamond, into exile to Switzerland. This diamond was stolen by an unknown subject around 1918 and was taken to South America. With no clue of its whereabouts, some claim it may have been cut up and sold in America after it was stolen in 1918. If it wasn't cut and resold, it would have been an extremely impressive jewel to discover and would be worth a great amount today. Oak Island Mystery The Oak Island Mystery is a baffling one. While many critics believe there's no treasure on this island, there have been countless books written about this mystery and even a documentary that was aired in 2014 about finding the hidden treasure of the island. The Oak Island is located in Canada in Nova Scotia's south shore. There are so many different theories as to what's hidden in these islands, mostly ancient artifacts and numerous locations. There are so many different theories as to what's hidden in these islands, mostly ancient artifacts and numerous locations the supposed treasure could be. Mostly, treasure hunters like to look at a few specific locations. The Money Pit, a formation of boulders called Nolan's Cross, the beach at Smith's Cove, and a triangle-shaped swamp. They say that the Money Pit has already been excavated and nothing has ever been found, but people continue to go to these islands to search. Pashala Necklace This is a pretty amazing necklace. It contains 2,930 diamonds. Not only that, but it actually holds the world's seventh largest diamond known as the De Beers, some rubies, and seven more diamonds with 18 to 73 carats. The necklace was made for Bhupinder Singh of Patalia in 1928 from the House of Cartier and then later given to Maharaja, also of the state of Patalia. Somehow in 1948, the necklace disappeared, but the famous De Beers diamond reappeared in 1982 by itself at Geneva Auction being sold for $3.16 million. The rest of the necklace later surfaced in London but was of course missing all of its large diamonds and rubies. Cartier decided to buy the necklace and remake it. It took them four years and they only made a replica, probably realizing the danger of making such an outrageous necklace. They filled the missing jewels with cubic zirconia and made a fake De Beers diamond for the centerpiece. Alamo Treasure 
in Texas, USA, the Lost Alamo treasure is hidden. The Mexican army fought 100 men from Texas and destroyed every single one of them in the Battle of the Alamo in 1836. Reportedly, the Alamo had hidden treasure of gold in its grounds worth millions. The treasure was brought to help free the Texas people from Mexico. They hid the treasure in case another war arose and they needed supplies. The theory is that the treasure was hidden in the bottom of the well, though others believe there isn't any treasure and that if there were, they wouldn't have hidden it in a well during a war as that would have dirtied their only access to clean drinking water in the instance of a siege. The Alamo is a fortress and also used as a Roman Catholic mission. The building was actually designed for educating the newly converted Christian American natives. The front street has already been excavated in search of the lost treasure. The building is now a museum. Poland's Royal Casket Poland's royal casket was made for royalty in 1800 and was said to contain 73 prized relics, including gold watches, chains, silver rosaries, ivory boxes, and silver cutlery. It went missing during World War II after it was sent to Sienawa in southwest Poland. They tried to hide the treasure in Poland but ended up losing it. Some people say that its whereabouts were given away in 1939 by a local man named German Miller who told the invading Nazis where to find the hidden royal casket. To this day, none of the missing relics have been found. It's possible that they're all scattered throughout Germany, hidden in various places. Ivory Coast Jewels six million dollars the Ivory Coast jewels were stolen only in 2011 the museum in the capital of Ivory Coast was robbed during the Abidjan battle they believed this robbery had help from the inside as none of the windows or glass boxes were smashed and the doors weren't even open the museum hasn't been able to recover a single thing the museum has managed to mark most of the stolen things in the Interpol database so that if anything surfaces they'll know that it's stolen they didn't just steal things of monetary value. These artifacts contain Ivory Coast's precious history, with some of them being from as early as the 17th century. Among the stolen artifacts were 35 gold pendants dating from the 18th century, 12 traditional necklaces from the 17th century, 6 miniature gold boxes from the 18th century, a 19th century royal saber, and an Aiken King headdress which could come from the Bayul or Anyi kingdoms. Jean Lafitte Jean Lafitte was a pirate from France. He and his brother worked together during the 19th century to steal treasures off boats in the Gulf of Mexico. They were hardcore pirates. They had a warehouse set up where they would bring the treasure to sell it. Many people believe that Jean and his brother, Pierre Lafitte, had so much treasure that they weren't able to sell it all. Instead, they began to bury the treasure to keep it safe. Whether this part is true or just a legend is hard to really know. Rumor has it that the treasure was buried in Lake Borgna and still remains there. This is located near the coast of New Orleans. Jean died in 1823, right before pirates basically became extinct in the Gulf of Mexico. There are also many rumors and legends about his death. No one is really sure how it happened. Please share this video with your friends below.